This video will explain the ResNet, a deep convolutional neural network architecture design. This is one of the most popular neural network designs that have ever been published with over 20,000 citations. Deep learning is thought of as learning a hierarchical set of representations, such that it learns low, mid, and high level features. In images, this is analogous to learning uh, like edges, and then shapes, and then objects. So theoretically, more layers should enrich the levels of the features. And previous models to the ResNet typically have depths of 16 and 30 layers. So the idea is that shouldn't building better neural networks be as easy as adding more layers to the network? So the first contribution of, Res of the ResNet paper is showing that if you just continue to concatenate convolutional layers on top of activations and batch normalization, the training will eventually get worse, not better. But they offer this insight, the construction insight, that says, if you consider a shallow architecture and its deeper counterpart with more layers, theoretically all the deeper model would need to do is to just copy the output from the shallower model, model with identity mappings. So the construction solution suggests that a deeper model should produce no higher error than the shallow counterpart. However, the identity functions aren't an easy function to learn. And so therefore, the residual functions formulate the layers as having a reference to the input through these identity or skip connections, such that theoretically, if it uh, needed to push the layer down to zero, it could easily do it in this framework. So again, this shows the residual connection, which is the building block for the residual network, or ResNet. So one interesting thing with ResNets is if the previous layer dimensions don't match the input to the next layer. If you think about a convolution, a 3x3 three three convolution would change the, the spatial dimensions of an image from like 32 by 32 to 30 by 30. So what they do here is they propose different schemes for upsampling the previous input layer's dimensions through this identity skip connection. So one of the two ways it can do this is it can either just zero pad the outsides of the spatial dimension, and there's no extra parameters with doing this, it's really quick, or it can expand the dimensions with one by one convolution. So this image shows what the ResNet looks like in contrast to a 34 layer plane network, which is a series of convolutional layers followed by activations followed by batch normalization, and compared to another really popular model, the VGG19. So the ResNet experiments, they test the 152 layer net on ImageNet, and this gets their state-of-the-art results. And this is eight times deeper than VGG nets, but in terms of the floating point operation measurement, it actually has less, uh, less computation than the VGG 19 shown by these uh, billion flops metric. So with the ensemble of ResNets, they're able to achieve 3.57% error on the ImageNet test set, which achieves them the state-of-the-art. They also test this on CIFAR 10 with 100 and 1,000 layers, and then they use the ResNet features on the COCO object detection. So the way the object detection networks work is you would use like VGG or ResNet to extract the features from the image data set, and then uh, you would classify the different bounding boxes based on some region proposal algorithm. So some more details about the ResNet is that it uses uh, batch normalization after each convolution and before activations. It uses the uh, Hainish laser invented by the author of the paper, Kaiming Hei. It uses a batch size of 256. Uh, they have this learning rate scheme, the weight decay, and then also interestingly, they don't use dropout. And they have they test on this one interesting test time augmentation where they don't just predict on the test image. What they do is they take uh, 10 crops from the test image, and then they predict the model predicts on each of the crops, and then they average the prediction that to form the final prediction. So the first uh, experimental result is showing how the ResNet continues to get better as you go from 18 to 34 layers, but the naive concatenation of convolutional layers is already starting to get worse. So just say 27.88% uh, to 25% error rate, whereas the plane network goes up uh, almost half a percentage from the uh, increase in layers. So then they test this idea of uh, when you're skipping ahead and the dimensions don't match, do you zero pad it? Do you have these uh, one by one convolutions? And how frequently do you use the one by one convolutions? So they do find that when they have one by one convolutions, or known as projections, that they do get a slightly significant uh, performance boost, but it comes at the cost of having a significant amount of extra parameters. 
So one of the things they do is when they train the ResNet 50, 101, and 152 is they extend the skip connection so it skips ahead two layers rather than one, like the normal uh, residual building block. And this is done just to save uh, training time. So these are the results of the different levels of ResNet, the B and C denoting the different ways of uh, doing the projection matching, and then compared to some of the other state of the art models like uh, Inception, VGG, yeah. And so this is the results of the ensemble of ResNets. This is the state of the art on the top five uh, predictions on the ImageNet test set. And also these are the results from the CIFAR 10 data set. And interestingly in this is um, you see that when they try to go from 110 layers, they achieve the state of the art with this, but when they try to go to 1,202 layers, the error goes back up. So they haven't quite figured out how to uh, make it go that deep yet. And then this shows how using the features extracted from ResNet outperform VGG on the localization or the bounding box detection task. So again, they find that when they try to, they do figure out how to make it significantly deeper than like the VGG 19 layers. But with this mechanism, the 1,202 layer net still does not perform well. And they suggest in the paper that this is due to overfitting. So thanks for watching this video on ResNets. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs. And the paper link is in the description.